Now I gotta ride or die Today you join me from the driver's seat of a 1998 Mark VI Escort GTI. No, not a VW Mark VI GTI, which is what it sometimes sounds like when you says that. It's an Escort with a GTI badge. Apparently the only GTI badge Ford in Europe, ever, apparently, according to the internet. But today we're gonna to take this relatively forgotten car out being, you know, mid 90s, this came out, so 98, this one being, it's a funny era. There was a lot of cars kicking about and I feel like this one was very quickly brushed under the carpet. But today I'm gonna to find out why. We're gonna go for an ownership point of view and see if it's worth owning something like this and if I feel like this is an appreciating classic. But as ever guys, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, but onwards to some B-roads. Escort GTI, a relatively forgotten modern 90s classic hatch. Basically, it's a 1.8 litre ZTEC engine, 113 brake horsepower, zero to 60 in apparently 9.2 seconds, which is a while, but that's not what we're here for. We're, uh, we're here to understand what this car is about. Because these have, you know, stayed cheap. They've been relatively cheap for a very, very long time. This one recently picked up, the owner has actually owned this for one week, and he picked it up for 775 pounds, which I think is an absolute bargain. I don't feel like you can really buy anything for under a thousand pound these days. It's actually worth buying. So this is a GTI badge, although it hasn't got the GTI badge on the back. It is a GTI though, I have, I have had a look, I've made sure it is a GTI. It's not wearing the badge today though, but this being a GTI variant of a car, under a thousand pounds, pretty much unheard of these days so it sparked my interest as to what this car was really about now if you know me if you watch the channel and stuff you'll know full well that i don't really know a lot about the mark 6 if i'm quite honest i know nothing about it if i'm really really honest i like series 1 and series 2 rs turbos and some cosworths and stuff so me trying to understand this car i had to do a lot of digging because there's not too much information especially on youtube from the ownership size of this car and that's sometimes hard for my job but i like to then relay what i found out to you guys so if you were looking to buy one of these what are you getting well you're getting that ztec engined gti badged escort from the late 90s you're getting white dials in front of you have a five speed manual box and as we come around this corner third gear probably not the right gear to be in but we're going to do it anyway we put our foot down 60 mile an hour is achieved. Now, I don't think this is slow in a sense, but it is slightly, I'm not gonna say heavy, this generation might be slightly heavier from previous generations, I know, you know, owner series one, RS Turbo, things light, but it's quite revvy. You can rev it, in fact, to the point where there is the rev gauge with no red marking on it. So there's no red marking to show you that you're doing too many revs in this thing. Now I feel like as an owner, you would look at this and you would be buying it because you used to own one, maybe this is the car you had when you were younger, your dad had one, whatever it was. The owner of this car is 25 and he's owned Mark 6s since pretty much day dot. So 
naturally he progressed into something a little bit fruitier. An RS2000 is expensive. They are getting very, very expensive actually. So the GTI is probably your next best bet. And to find a three door with not too much rust and we will, you know, just lightly touched on the idea that yes, if you're an owner, you will understand that these are going to be rusty. They are um, prone to, you know, rust. That's just how they are. Most Fords are from this generation. You will find rear arches going rusty, bulkhead going rusty, seals going rusty. So make sure if you are actually after getting one of these, check those places. This one, of course, has some of the signs of those bits and bobs, but the owner has reassured me that that is going to be assessed in the not so distant future. Now, as we overtake a Fiesta in the middle of the road, there is a lot to talk about in here. Half leather interior that you wouldn't necessarily find in other Escort models from this generation. And this one, again, from an ownership point of view, 145,000 miles. No, this doesn't have a 100,000 mile marker. So it's done one around the clock already. So it's at 145,000 miles. To be fair, it feels tight. As a driver, as me driving this today, jumping from car to car, it actually feels like it's been looked after. Those miles, if you covered that up, even if it said 45,000 miles, which it does in front of me because there's no 100,000 mile marker, you would genuinely think that this has this mileage on it. It drives straight and true. The steering's really nice. The suspension is supple, but sporty, I'm gonna say. And that sporty feel isn't necessarily something that Ford did at the time, but, the body kit was, it is inspired by the RS2000 of the same generation. So you'll see the side skirts, little bits of bobs, got a spoiler on the back. I feel like it does look a little bit more, I'm gonna say GTI-S because in the VW world, and this is a VW fanboy coming out, the GTI is sort of the, I don't know, the next level up of the relatively standard car, but it's not so in your face like a massive wing off the back like a Cosworth would have been. It's the subtle sports car of the gentleman hatchback that wants to have a sports car. It's basically the car that's in the middle that does everything, but is slightly sprightly at the same time. This is that car for the late 90s. That's how I feel. And driving it today, it feels like that car. It feels sprightly, it feels on its feet. And I think as an owner, you're gonna appreciate that. Because I've driven other variants of, um, say, entry-level Fords from this generation, you notice they are lacking in spots. This sort of makes up for it in maybe looks, but if not looks, it makes up for it in performance. Yes, 113 horsepower these days, that's nothing. Everything's 4 million horsepower with 20 turbos out the back of it. This is a little bit more laid back, and I feel like they might have done a good deal back then they might have done a good job back then Ford on this car but it really went under the under the radar because of the RS2000 because of you know similar generation Cosworths it just meant that not a lot of people really noticed this car and that is a shame but it is meant as an owner now you could go and pick one of these up for next to nothing this one again was 775 pound which i think is an absolute steal i have had a look around today though nice ones are like four or five grand so they have increased in price but i still feel like there's deals to be had out there because not a lot of people necessarily lust for this car so if you are willing to get into maybe something that's going to be an appreciating classic or modern classic in the next sort of five to ten years this might be a shout to jump in if it's not too rusty of course you don't want to be doing rust repair and that completely uh, wipe out your bank balance just because i said this one time that it might go up in price at some point and at the end of the day fords do follow suit i do feel like you're gonna get um some sort of increase but yes it isn't about that but it's always nice to know that your asset is you know doing bits for you at the same time as putting a smile on your face so all round what do i think great value for money late 90s slightly prefer it's not really a performance car but it's a little bit spicier than the standard. If I was looking at Mark 6s, I would probably look for a GTI if I could get one. I wouldn't just look for a Mark 6 finesse or whatever it was gonna be at the time. I would genuinely try and get one with some good mileage, good owners, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I do also feel like, you know, if, if that car's being sold, it's probably gonna be at a premium anyway. And yeah, looking on eBay, there wasn't any. There was a few on Marketplace, but again, there were two, three, four grand. There was one for two grand that was absolutely destroyed. So that shows what the market is up to at the moment. But let me know your thoughts below. Let me know if you think that this is a modern classic that is coming up 
if you think it's a good buy at the moment, maybe a three door, four door variant of the Mark VI, let me know in the comments below. And if you are an owner, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are of being an owner of one of these cars. I get this car for a few hours, you get to own the car. So I always want to know a little bit more on the ownership side of this car. But if you're after one, I reckon it's a good chat. But as ever guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Support FYD, I appreciate you guys in the description below. I'll see you on the next one.